Buy TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We usually come to you a few blocks from the Capitol. Today, we're at Andrew's Restaurant, right across from Florida's Capitol during Inauguration Day. So Tallahassee is full of activity with the inauguration of a governor and a full cabinet. I am joined by my co-host, Brian Burgess, publisher of The Capitalist, extremely well-read online publication. And our special guest is Matt Dixon with Politico Florida. Welcome, Matt. You nailed that intro really well done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I've yeah. had a little bit of practice. Your coaching is paying that's off, right, Matt. That's right. That's what I'm here for. I appreciate it. Us okay. guys. All right. So, so we got a new governor. What what top takes, what top messages are you seeing the governor leading with? Sure, well, we're all kind of looking for him in his, his inaugural address today. A lot of it's pomp and circumstance, but you kind of look for cues that administration, that the governor's going to put out, you know, what his first his first few weeks, his first year is going to be. And a lot of them were sort of common themes we've seen from the legislature and, and, and Governor Scott, a Republican governor, sort of lower taxes, school choice, some of, some of those. But the one thing that he hit on in the campaign trail that sounds a little bit different than past Republican statewide candidates, many lawmakers, is the environment. That's kind of the one theme he's used to to sort of reach out to his non-base supporters and, and talk about talk about some of his advocacy in that area. We really don't have any policy specifics yet, so it's hard to hard to get a grasp on if he's going to go forward in a different direction that we've seen before. But so far, the, the rhetoric from from Governor now Governor DeSantis on the environment has sounded different than, than Governor Scott and some Republicans in the past. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even on some of the appointments, initial things we're seeing, it looks kind of like a different day. So, so Brian Burgess, co-host today of Fi TV. Glad what questions here. do you have for well, the, you've got, the all you've got a mostly new cabinet, mostly new. Um, Jimmy Petronas is back, well, but the biggest change in the cabinet is a Democrat is now on the cabinet, Nikki Fried. How much fun, as a reporter who covers that stuff a lot, is it going to be, the ca cabinet meetings, how much more exciting and dynamic are those going to be when you have an automatically, not automatically, but perhaps dissenting voice? Oh, yes, the State Board of Administration meetings are now just going to be fascinating. <laughs> no, yeah, that's right. I mean, we're tailgating, right? No, no, right, exactly. <laughs> no, but, but but to your point, there, there have been some, some, some obviously, some big and high-profile issues the cabinet takes up. In the past, there's actually been some Republican infighting on, on some large issues, so now that gets up to a whole new level where there's, a, you know, perhaps a, a built-in no vote on some of the most high-profile controversial now. issues. Yep, and, and that's for, for Democrats. They, they lost Bill Nelson, the U.S. Senator, kind of the head of their party, which was a big deal and, and for Democrats a blow, but it adds a kind of a new layer and, and a, a new bit of power to actually have someone at the state level where a lot more policy and, and, and things move, and there's sort of a, a stronger voice on, on issues. Congress isn't doing a whole lot, and the state legislature and, and state government passes a $90 billion budget in two months, so there's a lot going on here. Yeah, so, so what do you see from... Uh, Agriculture Commissioner Freed, as as far as the political pressures she may experience from members of her party to to be a much more louder voice on issues that aren't related to ag or even the cabinet. Well, as, as the the only statewide elected Democrat, she is by default now the leader of that party. Uh, you know, which has been a, a whirlwind for her over the past six months or so. So I would imagine on on those issues, the you know the talking points on some of the cabinet issues that can be seen as sort of partisan flashpoints. There's going to be some pressure if she doesn't organically want to you know insert sort of a progressive. Or, or democratic voice to those. So I'd imagine there's going to be outside pressure there uh, as, as far as wanting to, to, you know, insert democratic talking points, democratic perspective where they haven't been in a while. So, so all right, I got one more. And we're going to, we're going to go straight to one of the biggest issues that's been kind of being whispered about in the Capitol is right now the, uh, the concealed weapons permit process is handled mm -hmm. under that department. Sure. It's a legislative purview to decide or designate by law. Sure. I mean, are you hearing, seeing any of that? That'll definitely put her front and center on that yeah, issue. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think that's been an issue outside of medical marijuana issue. She's, you know, taking a lead on it. And a Democrat in that office has already prompted the NRA to, to ask for it to be put under a law enforcement agency and so there's clearly going to be some back and forth on what has already been a, a, a very sort of controversial program uh, not not controversial for the policy perspective but it's been under the spotlight a lot since since the Republican gubernatorial primary Brian no I think I, it's gonna be a fun time the whole thing is gonna be fun you watch the speech you saw her you mentioned uh, off air that she there was moments in which she clapped moments in which she didn't with Ron DeSantis speech uh, I think you're gonna see she's gonna pick her moments she's very astute She's going to pick the right moments and and and, and make her case. Uh, it's going to be a fun time to watch. Well, I just think we're in for well, and not to mention Ashley Moody's also there now. So two women on the, the Florida cabinet. So the historical. Democrats, uh, yeah, absolutely historical. And the, so the Democrats have a, have a voice there, but there's also that that element as well. It's a it's a, it's a brand new cabinet. Well, so you see the Attorney General leading with opiate addictions. Yet you have one candidate that's been an advocate for medical marijuana or marijuana in general issues, and then you have a a Trump supporter in Governor DeSantis, where you have 
President Trump saying marijuana may not be his top priority. What do you see in that issue as a major issue? We, we have, uh, we, there's, there's, there's an active lawsuit over the, the whether or not the state can offer smokable medical marijuana. And we've been uh, one of our, our sort of hey, reporters. Uh, be, uh, said, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Now you're helping me out. Uh, my pleasure. No, but uh, one of our medical marijuana reporters has been asking the, the governor a lot about that. And I don't know that we have a lot of, they're, they're, they're not giving a ton of signals at this point. There's uh, some, you know, head fakes one way or the other, but I think we're going to have to kind of like a, a whole range of other policy issues. We're kind of in wait and see mode, I, I think. Right. And three or four court cases that will affect where the legislature and anybody can go. Everything on ends up in court. Right. I said right. this a minute ago, or the previous segment. It's, is this not the most exciting uh, upcoming session that we've had in a number of years? Sure. Well, I mean, if, if excitement is defined by uh, you know a whole bunch of new parts As out a there, political junk, yeah, absolutely, mean, yeah. Did start with a flyover. That's right. right I mean, that's right. pretty cool. That's right. Cannons. Yeah. Absolutely. It's always good. Absolutely. It's always good. <laughs> Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming on our program today and be the guest uh, seat. We look forward to maybe having you on as a co-host. Uh, Mr. Very, Burgess very filled, filled the role. Very good. I'm not yeah, firing you yet, but uh, but your evaluation will be coming soon. Yeah, so. I hope Peter's hangover gets well soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you in Politico, Florida. That's all the time we have for today's program. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit FITV and FIT up on our social media feeds. And for now, thanks for tuning in.